Hello, welcome to The Gun Shop, I'm John, and we're here today to talk about the difference between a clay gun and a game gun, or a field gun or a sporter. A field gun and a game gun are the same thing. Uh, regardless of what, I suppose it depends very much where you're from, who the gun's marketed towards, whether they're going to call it a field or a game gun. First I'll just call it a game gun, it's what it is, in my head anyway. Uh, a sporter and a clay gun, again, who you are, call it a sporter if it's for sporting, a trap gun if it's a trap, a clay gun is just a little bit too broad a term perhaps. However, a sporter is a gun that's technically designed to do everything. Alright, so what is the difference? Um, so to, extra, to explain the difference, I have two guns in front of me here. The Bretta Silvergen 1 Sporter and Silvergen 3 Game. So first things you'll notice about the two is there is a weight difference. The Sporter is about four and a half ounces heavier, I didn't just feel that, we weighed them, is about four and a half ounces heavier than the game. However, sporters are becoming lighter and lighter as time goes on, that's just a fashion thing. There was a time they were all about eight pounds and again they'll be about seven, seven and a half pounds. But you know, they are generally heavier. The reason for that is that you're going to carry it around for a short period of time with the ability to stick it down in the rack next to a stand, take it out, go pull, bang, pull, bang, pull, bang, pull, bang, pull, bang, back in the slip, and then you go and stick it in the next rack until it's your time to shoot again. You're going to shoot 100 cartridges, but for that time, you're going to, it's going to be in what, two hours? You're going to shoot your 100 cartridges, get in, shoot them all, enjoy yourself, and go home. Your actual time with gun in hand is fairly minimal. Weight also absorbs recoil, so the weight is there for those 100 cartridges you're going to shoot to absorb as much recoil as possible to make it a nice, stable, steady gun. The game gun is lighter because you're going to stand like this. All. Day. Long. And if you're not standing like that, you're going to stand like this. All. Day. Long. It's very rare for you to put it down, yeah you'll put it in the slip between drives, but there is a hours and hours and hours of waiting versus shooting time. And then even if you are shooting big days where your gun is moving a lot more and shooting a lot more than it stood still, you're still having to do this. Move that gun around again and again and again and again and again. And it does get tiring. Regardless of what anyone says, I get tired after 100 birds, mentally and physically tired from concentrating too much. I get tired after a game day because I've been throwing my gun around all day, um, missing things. The lighter weight will help you move the gun faster, will help you get less tired, and it's just a more of a pleasant thing to carry around, more mobile. Whereas the heavier weight absorbs more recoil, and that's pretty much it. It's a bit more planted, a bit stable, more stable to shoot. I suppose that's it. Weight, that's sorted. Lighter in the game, heavier in the sporter. Stock dimensions. Beretta have two different pad systems, one for their field guns, one for their sporters. The field guns, to strim weight, have a smaller stock height. The actual depth of the stock, this measurement from here to here, is greater on the sporter than it is on the game gun. So if I take this pad and put it on there, it will be 10 mil shy. Um, it's just not deep enough, that's, that's the problem. So what we have to do to actually explain that, I suppose, is with a game gun, you could be shooting over your shoulder like this, any which way, and you're walking along, you stop, something gets up, bang, you shoot a bird, you notice something off the other thing, and you're off over the other shoulder like that. You don't want quite so much shoulder engagement, a little bit more versatility, A, to trim weight, and B, to make it more versatile to mount. You've got a, a bit more variation in where you can put a smaller stock end. With a clay gun, like right, that's spirit A's coming like that, bird B's going like that. Bang, bang, that's it. Do that five times, you get to the next stand, you go, all right, well, there's one coming from there. All right, bang, bang. Nice, simple, maximum shoulder engagement makes for more consistency, and consistency is the key to hitting lots and lots of clays. Consistency, variability. Variability, that's not a word, but it is now. Next, stock dimension. The actual drop of the stock on a sport will generally be higher, have less drop than the game gun. This is because with a clay gun, you've got time to be nice and aggressive and it calls for a more closed style of shooting. If I mount this game gun in the same way, same aggressive style, 
the bead disappears. Game guns are generally designed to be shot in a more open style, like this. Lower, higher. And even then, with a sport you want to see a little bit of rib, with a game gun you want to see no rib. You want to see a bead. You don't even really want to see the bead. Knock that off, but you want to shoot point of impact with a clay gun, you can get away with shooting legs off a little bit more. That is the essential stock and dimension differences, weight differences. After that it goes into specification. Nowadays it's a so much crossover between what people want in one gun and what people want in the other gun, it's hard to say what is what. What I would say though is the sporter should be multi-choked, generally more, more commonly speaking, to add the variety, the possibilities to it. The field gun will more likely be fixed choke. Again, strim weight out, you don't need the variety so, as such, as long as you've got something good in there, quarter and a half, half three quarter, something like that, a good mid-range choke, you will kill everything with that. Removing that sort of thing. Also, it takes weight out the end of the gun, makes it quicker. However, nowadays you get more multi-choke game guns than you do fixed choke ones, so that sort of thing has passed with fashion, unfortunately. Next, what's on top of the barrel? The rib. On a sporter it will be slightly wider, this is because again, like I've said, you see the rib. So if you're going to have a slight aerial view, you'll see a little bit of rib, you want it to be a nice wide plane. Help sort of add some level existence without dragging the eye too much. And on the end you'll have a big, high glow, very visible sight. In this case you've got the white one, but you know, white, orange, blue, yellow, green. On the game though, you have a thin rib, not intended to see it. Adds to the sort of pointability of the gun, if you like, and you have a small brass, small silver, small nickel bead sight, something like that. Nothing too eye dragging, but just a nice point of reference. Different styles of shooting, that is the difference. The other things you might notice is you might have adjustable triggers on your sporters, there will generally be manual safety, the game guns will usually always be auto safety, not usually have an adjustable trigger, just have a single trigger, single selective. But and that's, that's pretty much it. Engravings can change, wood can change. Generally game guns can be described as more elegant. They're designed more for looks. So you end up with a game scene on the side, slightly higher grade wood, perhaps. And with the Sporter, something a little bit more basic, but more money put into the barrels. So you have on this one's got Optima Plus barrels. On the game multi choke you've got Mobile Choke barrels. The differences aren't massive. They're not massive, um, but certainly enough. Again, it's sales pattern to be able to charge you more for the sporter than the game gun, which again doesn't really make much sense. At the end of the day, right guys, what you do is you go into a shop, you find a gun that you like the look and feel of, you don't look at the tag, don't look at the, the price tag's obviously important, you don't look at whether it says sporter or field, obviously one's going to be slightly better at the other, but for your first gun or your first guns, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the sport and don't want to take it too seriously, the barrels are just steel tubes. There's nothing, it's not like a rifle where the quality of the barrel really matters. The barrels are just steel tubes that you put a cartridge in, it hits it, and the shot comes out the end. That is as simple as a shotgun gets. You can break glaze with a field gun, and you can kill birds with a sporter. I shoot everything with a converted trap Maruku with fixed choke, full and three quarter barrels. Kills clays, kills pheasants, does everything I need it to do. I'm sure that I've you know, there's been times where I wish I had a thin rib, there's been times where this, luckily I have other guns, so, you know, not monogamous or anything to that particular gun. But that is my mainstay. It doesn't make that much of a difference. However, when you're starting out, it will help to have a gun specific to what you want to do. But don't let it stop you having a gun that you like the look of or really like the feel of, because that is more important than the what it says on the tag. <laughs>